Roaming is arguably the most challenging position to play on defense and also the most misunderstood. That's why in today's video, I will be teaching you what roaming actually is, the operators you need to bring when roaming, and how to effectively roam no matter the rank. Starting off, what is roaming? Simply put, roaming is playing offsite to impede or slow down the attacker's push. This is what most people get wrong about roaming. They think roaming is getting kills and taking man advantage. While that can happen, that isn't your primary goal. Your main goal is to waste time and put your team in a position to play for the win condition. So now that we know what roaming is, let's go deeper and explain the two types of roaming and which one is best for you. The first type of roaming is soft roaming. Soft roaming is generally where you play a room adjacent to the site. This is a position where you can fall back to site safely and you'll still be able to slow the attacker's push. An excellent example of this would be VIP slash penthouse on coastline. When the bomb site is billiards hookah, you can restrict the push from that side over but still safely fall back to site. Another excellent example of this is master bedroom on clubhouse. When the bomb site is cash slash CTV, this is another position where you can slow the attacker's push and still be able to escape back to the site if need be. The second type of roaming, and by far the most difficult, is a hard roam. You should only be hard roaming if you are the main roamer on your team and you already have some experience roaming, whether it be soft roaming or some loose hard roaming experience. That being said, what is hard roaming? Hard roaming is playing off the site to impede the attacker's push. This is done by playing around common entry points far from the site or in positions far from the site that still influence the round. The best example of this is on bank. When the site is basement, play upstairs as it's common entry point for attackers and allows you to move with a degree of freedom. Another good example of a hard roam is top floor theme park when the site is throne room. This is because most attackers will be pushing top floor for vertical control and you can contest them pretty easily. Now that we know what soft roaming and hard roaming is, what are the best operators to use when roaming? This comes down to personal choice, but generally you want to pick an operator with the following criteria. They have high mobility, so any three speed operator is already a pretty good choice or any two speed operators with impacts or shotguns so they can make rotates so they can move more freely. The second piece of criteria is they provide external value to the team. So no operators that only benefit you. There is some nuance to this and we'll get to that in a minute. The third piece of criteria is they have a degree of self-sufficiency, meaning they don't need your team's resources to be successful on the roam. So if you're roaming, you don't need Valkyrie cams to assist you. They can assist you, but you're not having a Valkyrie pair up with you specifically. That's taking resources away from the team. Ideally, you want to be self-sufficient so you can get your own information or disengage from fights on your own terms. Now that we know the criteria, let's break down some operators that are pretty good and fit this criteria really well. And if you play these operators when roaming, you should already be ahead of your competition if they're not picking them. First off is Solus, Legion, Venure, Echo, Alibi, and Mozzie. These are great operators for any type of roam, but specifically for soft roaming. They get a lot of value there, and they're really, really good. Would recommend picking any of those for soft roams, but you can also pick them for hard roams if you're a little bit creative. The next type of operators are really good for hard roams, but this is where the nuance comes in from before. Some of these operators don't actually provide you value to the team. This is because they're focusing on value maxing themselves and their self-sufficiency, meaning that you might not provide a value to the team, but you're providing a lot of value to yourself. Therefore, you're more likely to stay alive on these hard roams where you're playing pretty much on an island by yourself. Operators that are good for this are Solus, Vigil, Cap, and Alibi. This is because a lot of these operators are incredibly fast. They have easy ways to get out of situations and they have strong weaponry. Solus is really good because she's self-sufficient and she can get rid of drones fairly easily. Vigil's decent as he can maneuver and kind of get rid of drones by just being invisible to them. Cav is okay because of her silent step, makes her hard to be heard, and she also is not being able to be tracked by Jackal, which is pretty strong. And then Alibi for her strong kit and her strong guns and her prismas that might be able to give her information and can give her a leg up over the competition when she's being pushed. Now that we have the foundations built and you know what roaming is, the operators that you need to be bringing, let's break down some clips that I've hit so you can really kind of see how I roam effectively and how you can maybe roam effectively in your games too. So here's a clip that I'm going to be breaking down of a decent hard roam with Jaeger. I'm basically on an island. I've already used my ADSs to set up site as you can see down here. And now once I've done that, and I know I'm not anchoring because I've communicated with my team earlier in the round that my teammates are going to be anchoring, I'm allowed to kind of just do whatever I want. So I thought it would be best to hard roam. I know my Valkyrie is soft roaming in whiskey, kind of impeding the push there, kind of controlling VIP. And I'm going to be playing second floor. This gives me a lot of maneuverability because I can go to whiskey stairs. I can stay on white or I can go down red later in the round. So starting off, I'm going to be playing white stairs because I know it's a common entry point for attackers on this site. In case they want to try to get freezer wall, they're going to have to push in here. So let's just see how it plays out. I hear the Ash get off drone and I'm going to keep contesting this position and I'm able to get the kill. Once I get that kill, I reposition. This is a key thing that most roamers won't do. 
they'll still try to contest the same spots over and over. This can work if you're mechanically skilled, but if you have enough people with enough resources, they will run you down and you will lose. By the way, I stream every single day at Twitch.tv, so if you want to see roaming gameplay like this, hey, head over there, I'd appreciate that. So, moving on, after I got that kill, a lot of the time, what I'm going to be doing is trying to get on camps and position myself in what I like to call a small position. Small positions are positions that are relatively safe. You can kind of be self-contained and you don't have to worry about getting pushed. A lot of the time, once you are in these positions in your little safe corner, small corner of what I like to call it, uh, you can get on camps. The reason why you're going to want to get on camps is because you need information. Roaming is a lot about information denial and information gathering, meaning that once you have information, you can make informed decisions. And because I have a Valkyrie, I know I can get on cams and help my team because they're the ones actively taking gunfights to people pushing bakery side. So just by me being on cams and having them take the gunfights, that in itself is also pretty effective and a great way to apply impact. It's also helpful because if I know where they are, I can make informed decisions on where to go next. So let's play it out. As you can see, I'm hopping on cams, I'm cycling, and the first thing I'm trying to do here when cycling cams is to make sure no one's pushing me. Because I'm in a small position, I'm, I'm in a relatively safe position, but you never know how safe you really are. That's why I try to hop on cameras in most instances after I get a kill, or even before I get a kill, so that I can figure out if anyone's hunting me down. I did just previously kill the Ash on bottom white, so it would, you know, reason to believe someone might want to try to push me and clear me out if I'm going to be a nuisance upstairs. But thankfully no one does that, and I can hop on cams and help my teammate, especially the castle who's playing bakery. I'm constantly cycling, trying to figure out where I'm going to be going next, helping my team out in any way I can. I'm noticing they're not pushing a lot in Whiskey, and I know that we have Whiskey pretty well, like, cornered off, meaning that it is possible they can take Whiskey. We don't have any contesting going on in Whiskey. It's not a great foothold for the attackers because there's so much defense we have built up, but I know it's possible they could be here. So that being said, I'm watching it pretty diligently so they don't push up. I'm going to fast forward here now that I've gone off cams and we're going to move up closer into the end of the round. I've got off cams and I'm still communicating with my team. I know there's only a minute and 18 left on the clock, meaning that they're going to have to push relatively soon. So I'm proactively positioning myself to counter the push that they're going to do. I'm going to try to impede the attack as much as possible. So this is kind of what I do after talking with my teammates. So he calls out red stairs, maybe brown stairs. So based off that information, I'm going to try to get a pick or at the very least, slow them down. Just make my presence known so they, as an attacker, know in the forefront of their mind, oh, there's still a Jaeger upstairs. He still can mess us up later in the round. So he signifies it's a sound call. That's a good distinction. A sound call and a visual call are two different things. So a sound call is, hey, there might be someone over there. And because Siege's sound is relatively unreliable, it's good to preface whatever you're calling with is, is that a sound call? Is that not a sound call? Because sometimes it can be wrong. In this case, he actually wasn't correct. He was hearing red, but it was, I'm thankful that he still gave the call out so I could potentially apply pressure. This is also another thing you need to be doing as a roamer. You need to relay information back and forth to your team pretty heavily. Oh, I got to pick on Ash White. Oh, I'm upstairs. Oh, is there anyone nearby? Like things like that. So you can be the most effective you can be in this position. I'm going to skip ahead here to where the action actually starts because there was no one brown. But I do still take the space. I do still kind of get information from my team because I know no one is on brown side. So fast forwarding with only 50 seconds left, I cleared out brown and I made sure there was no one there. So now I'm going to be pushing red as that is where I got a call previously. And I can hear people outside the window here, which is why I checked to the window. I hear them on the proximity calling to my team bottom red. So I'm now in a position with 30 seconds left on the clock to deny this push. And I know my castle is contesting the bakery hop in. So I'm going to get a crossfire with him so that I can help him out even more. I hear the Finca boost and then basically the rest is history. I get three kills here and castle closes it out. And then we close out the round. So that was a pretty effective roam. I got an entry pick really early on. I denied a lot of the information just by kind of being around upstairs so they couldn't drone me. And then I helped and collapsed my castle later in the round. This is a pretty effective hard roam, though I did get lucky because no one tried to retaliate after I killed the Ash. They let me be upstairs. They figured it was too much time and resource intensive to push me out from upstairs because they had no idea where I was. They weren't doing a top down. They were doing a lateral over push. So for that reason, I was able to be effective. It's not always going to be like that. In higher ranks, people will drone you. But it's also crucial to know that people also won't drone you sometimes. And if they won't drone you, take advantage of that and play absolutely crazy. Now, the next clip I'm going to be showing you is, is a more effective roam. It was pretty high impact, but we didn't win the round. And I think that's crucial to show because sometimes you can do quite a bit for your team and not win the round. So I'm going to go pull that up now. So first thing to note, our site is going to be top floor on canal. 
I am playing Echo, and the reason why I'm playing Echo is because I think he's actually the best roamer in the game. A video on that soon. But what's really nice about Echo is his two drones. The Yokai drones can be used in pretty creative ways to get a lot of information, meaning that you're pretty self-sufficient. So even though he's not the fastest operator, and I do know he comes with impacts, and I usually bring them. I, I just didn't do it here because I'm an idiot. Um, but because he has the Echo drones, he can get a lot of information for himself, meaning that you don't need your team's resources to set yourself up for success. And he also has a really good gun in his MP5 SD. It does a little bit more damage than the other MP5 counterparts on Doc and Rook and Malusi, but it also has the advantage of being suppressed, meaning that you aren't going to be here as easily. He actually is a really good roamer just based off his gun, but in combination with the Echo Drones and the fact that he has an impact nades, which I didn't bring, but you should, he's actually pretty good. So let's discuss what's going on here. I'm just trying to get information and I'm really trying to get information from my team. I'm not trying to get kills this time around. What I'm trying to do is slow down the push by getting information, relaying that information to my team and kind of impacting the round that way. As you can see, I hop on my drone, and the first thing I do is I make sure no one is pushing me. Again, because I'm in a small spot, I could be able to get pushed here. I don't have a lot of resources. So I'm going to go send my drone out, and I'm going to get info. I relay the info to my team by Z-pinging, because I don't believe we were calling much this mask. And I'm going to jump out again, and I'm going to scan. Uh, this is going to give a lot of red pings, and they know where they're going. That's fucking insanely fun. It, it, is, it is insanely fun. So now that I have that info, I relayed that to my team. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to try to play for kind of impeding them. There's only a minute left on the clock. And because I know I have an Echo Drone, I can make a lot of plays here. And because I know my gun is good, I can also try to contest from outside. So I see they have a Claymore. Again, this is why the Echo Drone is super nice. I was trying to block the, the laser with the Echo, but I was like, eh, this is probably not worth it. And because I have a suppressed gun here, just built in, I can actually shoot this without getting my position revealed pretty easily. Now I'm going to go out, jump up, still got a lot of spots, still no three out. there's three out there. And because I still have time on my Echo Drone, I'm just kind of I'm going to walk it back. I'm going to open it. I'm going to swing. And then I'm actually going to be able to get the kill on the Thermite. It's not pretty, but we get the job done. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hop out, put my drone out there. And again, I'm just, I'm just getting info. Like, this is a nightmare to play against. Like, I, I am very aware that the gridlock is there, but the gridlock really can't do anything. I can just kind of drone for, for all of eternity. I swing. She's not peeking. I'm whiffing all my shots because I haven't played in a while. But still, as you can see, I'm just slowing the push down because I'm contesting this. A few things are happening. The Gridlock has to take the gunfight with me. I'm just going to keep pressuring her. And anyone that's in Skybridge is now known that I'm here. They, they, they have the information that I am playing here. And then they might try to contest me that way. Pulling them back from Skybridge. Allowing a teammate to push up and take control of Skybridge. Or contest it more effectively. So this is actually a pretty valuable position that I'm in. It allows me to do a few things. I see the Gridlock throw her drone. So I'm just going to swing. Even though I know she's faking it. It's not that big of a deal. I've already lit her up earlier in the round. And I'm able to get the kill. And I was actually wrong. I do believe we win this round pretty handedly. And I, I would agree. It's true. I, I was spinning. He, he shouldn't be as good as he is. Um, but as you can see, we, when we won that round, I thought we lost that round. I think we I think we lose the first round that I did that. I'm not too sure. Or the second round we did that. Um, but regardless, that's, a, that's an effective hard realm. Two different ways. One, denying a lot of information as Jaeger by just kind of being a, a nuisance upstairs and playing for kills. Not really what you want to be doing, but something that you can do. It's not your primary goal. And this time it's Echo playing a lot for just kind of running down the time, spotting with the Echo Drone, giving constant information, because when you spot them with the Echo Drone, they're going to look for a Valkyrie camera or some type of camera. That might take five to 10 seconds off the clock, and that five to 10 seconds can actually be crucial later in the round when there's only 10 to 20 seconds to execute. Instead of giving them 30 seconds to execute, we're only giving them 20, and in 20 seconds, there's some room for mistakes there that are more open than if there were 30 seconds left. So for that reason, it's still pretty powerful. And these are just some decent ways that you can hard roam as Echo and also how you hard roam as Jaeger. Now, that being said, would I recommend hard roaming to new players? Probably not. I would recommend soft roaming and then working your way up to a hard roam. So that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you liked this video, check out this video on the screen. And if you want, follow me on twitch.tv slash Vexian. I stream every single day from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. CST. I'd appreciate you guys stopping by. See you guys in the next one. Peace.